Okay, everybody. Well, I really wanted to do a, like, a video about this particular subject because it's actually quite fascinating, and I don't think there's really a lot of information on it. Um, but that's, uh, tile collision, tile-based, uh, collision <clears throat> on, uh, like a traditional 2D game. And, uh, nowadays, like, when we're talking, uh, collision in a game, it's usually done with, like, a physics engine. But back in the old days, you didn't really have enough processing power to do uh, a full working physics engine. And so they made, uh, they did a lot of interesting things to kind of make it work. And uh, I'm going to show you how I'm doing it, which is, uh, I think, a pretty interesting system. And I, I kind of, like, pieced this system together based on uh, things that I read about other systems... You know, none of the things that I read were really kind of complete in, in terms of their their full way of doing things. So, like I said, I kind of piece things together. Hold on, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the uh, turn off a couple of layers here, so they're not uh, distracting. Anyway, so this is uh, this right here is you know my character, and you can see he's got a little red box that kind of follows him, kind of a lag time. It's it's almost like, uh, yeah, it's it's almost like um, traversing traversing the map square by square. Um, he's traversing the map pixel by pixel, more or less, but the, the actual hit box or the collision box is traversing by uh, square by square, as you can see there. <clears throat> and that just gives me an idea of where his hit box actually is. And you can see that uh, if the hitbox is next to what should be an object like this tree, then if I try to move into it, I can't move into it. I can go as far as this, which uh, if you'll see that little, there's that little dot or little X right in the middle of that. Hold on, I'll just turn this guy off really quick so you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, so that little X ends right about at that, you know, about at that line, and that's basically, if it were to move like one over, then that, that hitbox would be considered to be over here, but it can't because it's blocked, so it never actually goes that far, but yeah, as, as I move this little um, hitbox kind of like to the edge of a square, all of a sudden, boom, you know, the, uh, or the, the ah, sorry, as I move this little box with the X on it to the edge of the square, the hitbox actually moves, you know, jumps up into another square. So, <clears throat> so that's kind of how it works, is I don't, I don't actually, like, do a thing like, you know, checking the radius of my character and seeing whether or not that character is, like, near another character or an obstacle. Instead, I just check the map and say, okay, where is my actual hitbox? There it is. And then I check to the left. And then I say, well, there's an object right there, so I can't actually move left anymore. And so it stops me if I try to actually move into another square. And uh, same thing with the up. And I say, well, there's an object up there, therefore don't let me move up. And I just do it based on where my actual collision box is. In that case, that's represented by the red square. Instead of actually checking the uh, the actual sprite as to where that is, because that can be uh, that can be just about anywhere. I can uh, the um, the variability of where that sprite can be is is uh, can make things tricky. Like I was I was recently doing it a completely different way. I was going. And I was taking that where where my actual sprite was, and I was um, getting the angle of that, and uh, like the obstacle here, and checking whether the angle was right for whether or not I should be stopped. Because it's very easy to do just basic hit detection, but the tricky part is to make it where you can just slide along walls. Because what will happen is you'll be over here, you'll want to move over here into this like area and then the uh, the hit detection or the the collision detection will check all of these tiles here and it'll say okay there's one down therefore I don't want you to move down and that's a problem see this because this square here where this square is right there 
it actually intersects with that tile, which is down. And so I'll block myself from going down, so I couldn't slide along the wall. So, um, yeah, that, that was... So the workaround for me at that time was to say, okay, let's check the angle. So if I'm at a certain angle from this tile, then it is it will block me from going down. If not, then it, will, it won't do anything and I can slide along. That didn't work, though, when I had to fix another problem. <clears throat> So anyway, this is the this is the um, the method that I've now uh, changed to. And uh, the great thing about this method is, sure, it works for one you know one square, one full um, yeah, one full rectangle. But um, if I want to make my my uh, collision box bigger, let's say I want to do. Uh, a two by two hitbox because I you know my character's bigger and uh, you know the hitbox should obviously be bigger right so let's go ahead and make that uh, oh hold on I'm gonna actually hit play here let's go ahead and make that character bigger Actually, we'll make all the characters bigger here, so they so it actually looks like they fit their uh, collision boxes. So, 0.5. This is uh, this is probably about right. One point. Whoops. Whoop. No, that's too big. 1.5. Okay. So there we go. So their actual like uh, collision boxes are now, as you can see, it's two squares by two squares. So a total of four squares. And in fact, I'm going to get rid of uh, I'm going to get rid of that guy so you can see what's going on here. So, as I move around in this uh, like collision box, as I move to the edge, it'll flip. You know, so where my actual like collision is flipping to other tiles. Oh, I need to get rid of that uh, front layer and the scroll layer. There you go. All right. Yeah. So now you see because I'm. Uh, because part of my collision uh, box is uh, bumping up against this tree here. I can't go up. And uh, there was an issue where I would try to go diagonal and I would move through it, but I fixed that. Um, so it's pretty much perfect. Now, the reason that I switched to the kind of this system from the old system that I was using was when I added the characters in here... Um, I was having trouble uh, getting the collision right with the characters, and therefore I had to change things around. So, uh, the the advantage to this system is, like, if I move over here, and I, you know, I want to see if I'm colliding with this character here, I don't have to go cycle through all the units that I have on the map and say, is this guy close to me, is this guy close to me, is this guy close to me? Instead, I have to just check that tile and say do I have a collision there have I drawn you know have I assigned a unit a unit's collision to that box if so okay you know stop I don't have to even know who the, who it is I'm colliding with uh, and that's much much faster because even though I only have five units on the map right now to collide with I mean if I were to get just 25 units you know that you know let's say 25 I'd have to do how many collisions per frame I'd have to check for about 625 collisions per frame and of course you know the more you add the more units you add the more that scales up and that really gets complicated when you're doing something like pathfinding because you know pathfind has to happen pretty quick you know let's say at least I'd say a tenth of a frame, and then that tenth of a frame, you have to do all those collision checks for all of those characters. You have to go through that whole list and say, okay, is this character here? Is this character here? Is this character here? Instead, you just check a tile and you say, hey, is there anything on that tile? Because each time I move these units, I update these units, I update where their collision boxes are and have a whole array for that. It's a whole separate collision array that I just draw, or I just uh, assign them to the correct squares of where they are. And if I really want to, then I could use that to just look up, 
to who, you know, see who I've actually run into if I really want that information. So that's a, a nice thing about that. It's fast. It's, um, yeah, well, it's basically about speed. Um, and uh, it's not, you know, as you can see, obviously, these squares, you know, when I move up to this guy, I mean, if I turn this off, let's turn my sprite back on. The accuracy isn't, you know, isn't perfect. Like, you see, here I am, and it looks like, well, I maybe shouldn't be, you know, I maybe shouldn't be blocked at certain parts. It's like, well, there's a little part blocking me here that, that there's really nothing there that you can see. So it looks like maybe, you know, it's not quite as accurate as it should be. I could tighten that up a bit. There's some few things I can do just using this system to tighten that up. I could do two collision detections. One to see if they're like, you know, their little boxes are on the squares I'm trying to move to. Then if that if that's true, then I could do another uh, detection and see if they're close enough for me to actually bump into them. If they're not, I can keep going. So... I could refine that if I wanted to. Maybe that would be... I don't know about this game, but... You know, maybe going forward, improving the engine, maybe that would be worth doing. But, you know, it works well enough. Uh, certainly for a game like this. And also, you know, I'm, I'm actually... I'm actually not... Oh, okay, that's what's going on. Yeah, see, it didn't, didn't seem like I should be blocked there. Basically, he's blocking me from going down. And, uh there and I'm I can't uh, I can't move any farther left because my my box is there it didn't look right without you know seeing what was actually going on yeah right there but um, yeah like I said it's good enough and it can be refined from here if you want to you know spend the extra cycles to do a little bit more checking but it works well enough um, and like I said really a lot faster than doing it the uh, just cycling through all the units and seeing if you're, you know, they're next to you. Uh, and this is, I believe, this is how a lot of the older games did this because they simply didn't have the the uh, the speed to do it any other way. Um, and uh, I was watching something on, you know, the guy who made the original Gauntlet was uh, giving a speech there, and he mentioned he mentioned a system kind of similar to this, from what I gathered. Um, so that's kind of one of the, one of the ways I kind of got the idea to do it like this. And, um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty proud. It took me a while, though, to kind of get it to work right. For instance, for the longest time, I had a problem where, here's the actual code to, to check if I can move on a position. Uh, I'm not going to try to explain this in detail. It's probably... It's, uh, you know, it's not well documented. I know what it does, but uh, anyway, if I cut this part out, so oh, this is basically me checking the right, left, up, and down to see if the I should block X, X or Y movement, but I left this, I didn't have this part in here, and I had this problem, um, which I'll just show you real quick. So I had this problem, and I couldn't figure out what was causing that, but then I figured it out. So, if I'm standing, like, right here, and then I suddenly manage to go diagonal, because here's, here's what the code's doing. So, <clears throat> if I want to move, it only, first of all, it only checks the directions that I'm moving in. So, you can only ever move in a two-dimensional array here. You can only ever move in two directions at once. You can move up and down left and right or or up up and right you know uh down and right you know uh left and down this kind of thing you can't move like right and left at the same time uh but anyway um yeah so i'm checking up like let's say i'm moving diagonally up here i'm checking these two tiles right here and these two tiles and saying okay are these two tiles clear and if so, I say, okay, you can, you know, I'm not going to block you anywhere. You can go ahead and move freely. And what would happen would be that. And I'd move into that, that tile right there. Because I'm not checking that tile. I'm not even, 
uh, as the code was, I wasn't even aware that that tile was should be blocking me. So instead, I added this part right here to uh, saying, okay, if you're not blocked, then let's check all these different like uh, corners that you could be moving into. And of course, I have it if you know. Else if, else if, else if. You don't want to, like, waste any, you know, checking anything you don't have to. That's why I have all the else if statements here. So if I'm moving in, if I'm moving to the right, I don't want to be checking moving to the left because I can't possibly move in the right and left at the same time. Therefore, if I was checking both of them, that would be a waste. So same thing with here. If I'm moving up, like, upright, then I can't be moving, like, down left or any of that. So that's why I have all the else if stuff. And so what happens here is I, I flag, I say, okay, we're blocked, and therefore, if we're blocked, let's go ahead and disable uh, or reset the movement on one of the axes, depending on where we're blocked. Anyway, so, and that ends up uh, working pretty much perfectly. Pretty fast, too, as far as I can tell the, uh, the code, you know... It runs a lot faster than if I were running a full-blown physics engine, that's for sure. And Unity does have its own built-in physics engine. Uh, which is, like I said, it's overkill for what I'm doing here. I will have some kind of faked physics, you know, probably. Uh, like, you know, maybe be pushed around by, say, if you, if you run into, like, a moving obstacle. If there are moving obstacles in this game, we don't know yet, but, uh... If there are, you know, there would be stuff like being pushed, like say, you know, if there was like a some some kind of like obstacle pushing out there, and I moved into it and I got pushed over, that that would be the the like the extent of the physics that I would actually be doing in this kind of game, or in this game in particular. Uh, but um, yeah, so that's that's you don't really need a physics engine if that's all you're doing, and uh, I do want like I'm always building these kind of engines be, uh, in the anticipation of having probably pretty big maps and therefore probably a lot of these, you know, NPCs walking around. Therefore, you know, uh, the faster I can make it, the better. You know, I, I don't like the, the modern games that are totally unoptimized and, uh, you know, lag your computer even though there should be simple games. But uh, also, in the future, I want to, you know, maybe use this engine to make, uh, I don't know, maybe a real-time, you know, adventure game or something like that. So, it's it's always good to actually kind of iron this stuff out. But anyway, so I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd update you guys on um, what I've been doing here. I've been doing, uh, literally, this is kind of all I've been doing recently. Um... And uh, it was it was kind of a grind trying to figure this out. I'd, I'd fix one problem and then find another one and then have to kind of like change the way I was doing things. Uh, not as simple as you might think. Um, Tile-based collision. Not as simple and easy as you might think to actually make. Um, I, I have a lot more respect for, uh, you know, like people who uh, program this sort of thing on like the Super or the like the Nintendo with uh, Assembler. That's for sure. But anyway, okay, so, uh, well, uh, till the next update, guys.